again, church family. Back to me. Good to be back with you. Had a couple weeks vacation and really enjoyed some time away camping and visiting with some friends back east and enjoyed our time, but uh, always nice to come home and uh, be back with the church family. So hope you're doing well and uh, hope that uh, one day we all get to see each other again in person. That'll be coming up sometime, but as of today, no COVID updates yet. Um, the anticipation was that when I left a, about a month ago um, or a few weeks ago, that within about a month, we would have uh, some more analysis, some more data that had been looked at and some changes being made right around now. But as of right now, neither the state nor the county um, have put anything out uh, moving us forward. So at this point, we're still uh, in the, the same spot that we've been for a while. And unless something changes uh, pretty quickly here, which it can, as you know, as I know very well, uh, can change on a dime, uh, we'll keep you updated as we can uh, when things are going to be changing for us so that we can make some, some uh, hopeful changes here for us to be able to continue to keep moving forward and hopefully not any, any steps backward. A um, few things that we would just like to reiterate, <clears throat> excuse me, to you as, as pastors, just in regards to how we're, how we're all doing, how we're all handling this, how we're responding to this situation, is just to remind you that our, our calling as, as pastors is to shepherd this flock in the specific context that we find ourselves in right now, in California, in Contra Costa County. Um, it's a confusing time for many. It's a frustrating time for many. Um, but what we have to do as, as pastors is shepherd this flock under these circumstances with the, the health and safety restrictions that we have uh, as best as we're able to do. Um, so please continue to pray for us. I know many of you are praying for us, and we really do appreciate that. And we, we need that. And we want to ask that you would continue to be praying for us, that God would give us wisdom as we make decisions, as we talk about these things, as we keep moving forward, as we're taking into account all the things that are going on around us. Um, pray for God to help us to have wisdom and to make choices and decisions that will be the most fruitful for us as a body of Christ here. Um, keep in mind that as, as we wrestle with, with the decisions that we have to make, we're keeping in mind that all of you are, are not, everyone's not all on the same page. Uh, there are, are, there's a wide spectrum of, of different perspectives on how these things should be viewed and how they should be handled. We understand that. Um, that's frustrating for you sometimes. It's frustrating for us as well. And uh, there's not just a, a cut and dry, hard and fast uh, way to do things that's perfectly right all the time. So we're trying to do the best that we can in terms of what we feel is best for our flock here in uh, Pleasant Hill and uh, what we can uh, best do to serve the Lord and to serve you as we uh, kind of are just stuck in this situation that we would not have chosen, uh, but is under the sovereign hand of God. And we know that for whatever reasons and purposes, He's, he's letting this happen right now, and, and this is within the context of his plan and purpose. And so we want to be uh, working to best utilize what he's called us to do and the gifts that he's given us to be able to shepherd and care for you. So please continue to pray for us in that regard. Um, our main concern right now is, is that you are having your, your spiritual needs met as best as possible, that you would be able to have some opportunities for fellowship as, as best as we're able to accomplish those things, and that there would be uh, pastoral care given uh, to you as you need that, whether it's uh, counsel or advice, whether it's just a, a shoulder to cry on, whether it's... Um, scripture to encourage you. Uh, we want to be able to be here to help you in, in all of the circumstances that you're facing that we can in somehow shepherd you through or, or, or walk through with you in some way. So in addition to praying for us, please be talking to us, be communicating with us. If there are ways that we can better shepherd you uh, at a personal level, if there are needs that you find yourself having, if, if you're just unsure, you're finding yourself needing comfort, um, please don't hesitate to call any of us, any of the pastors, or email us or text us. Um, contact your community group leaders. If you're in a community group, contact the deacons. All of us are here to help and to serve and to shepherd and to minister and to care for you as best as we can. 
But one of the things that you do need to do is let us know if there are ways that we can do that, if there are things that we can do to help. Even if it's just to pray with you on the phone over a, a situation that you're facing, we'd be happy to do that. Um, don't think that we're all too busy. Um, we've all got different busyness that we're, we're having to deal with right now. But part of what we have to do as, as just believers together is be able to take time from the different types of busyness that we have right now and still be able to minister to one another, care for one another, and love each other. Um, one of the things that we, we tend to have a little bit more of right now because of the shutdown is time. So don't, pe don't think that people will be too busy to be able to, to spend some time with you, even if it's just a short phone call or, or just some email exchanges or text exchanges. Take advantage of, of being able to utilize the body of Christ uh, to, to help you spiritually when you need that. Um, don't neglect your own spiritual care thinking that uh, people just don't have time or, or who, would, who would want to know. Well, we all want to know. We all want to care for you. And, and subsequently, you care for us too. As you, as you pray for us, we want to be able to pray with you even or for you, uh, whatever, you're, whatever you're having to find yourself going through. So please be, be communicative um, with pastors, with the church office, with the deacons, with community group leaders, uh, even just other friends that you have here at the church or other Christian brothers and sisters that you know of in your family or outside of this church. Um, take advantage of it. God has given us each other. And even in this time, we have the luxury of having many ways that we can communicate with each other. So take advantage of those things. Be communicative. Talk. Don't just, uh, don't just sit at home on your sofa and watch Netflix. Um, be, be engaging with people and let people engage with you and, and encourage you and, and comfort you and, and lift you up when you need that, okay? Deal? All right, I'll hold you to that. Um, thirdly, we just wanna let you know that our, our, our current ministry uh, model, as you guys know what we're doing, we're, we're striving as best as we are able to to continue to deliver uh, ministry to you through the Sunday streaming services. Uh, the last two weeks, we've had uh, the uh, outdoor service in the afternoons at Fair Oaks at four o'clock. Uh, we won't be doing that this week, but we are um, looking into being able to add more time into our Sundays and take um, hopefully the last couple Sundays of August. If, if that works out, we'll be able to meet again there. One of, the, one of the little twists in this is that Fair Oaks is hiring a new pastor who is starting in September. So we don't know what September will look like uh, once he comes on board. Um, hopefully, we'll still be able to continue to partner with them and use their, their parking lot if we still need to. Along those lines, though, pray that we don't have to keep doing that for too long. Pray that we'll be able to start opening back up here uh, again very soon. And, uh, you know, as, as I've been watching this all these months, it seems like this should be a time where they're starting to say, okay, we can start moving forward again. So be in prayer about that. Uh, be, be asking the Lord to, to be gracious to us and allow us to start meeting again. So in addition to, to those uh, couple of things, there are some small groups that are meeting as well, some community groups that are, are gathering. Um, as Scott um, mentioned a couple of weeks ago, the state and the county, they do acknowledge that meeting together with people is good, that it's good for our mental health, and they, they do allow that in certain ways and to certain degrees. In regards to com our community groups specifically, um, they view us, they view those as a a uh, religious service. And so a religious service can can be unlimited in number outdoors. So community groups are free to meet uh, in a backyard um, with masks and social distancing, just seeking to apply those things. Um, you're still free to do that. So if your community group is inclined uh, to meet together, uh, please take advantage of that. And if, if there's someone in your in your community group who's got a large enough yard that can accommodate um, your, your group being able to meet outside and, and do that, please take advantage of that if, you, if you're so inclined to do so. I know that some of you are still meeting on Zoom and we're just grateful that you're still meeting and being in touch. Um, but be mindful that that is one of the avenues of ministry that we would strongly encourage all of you to participate in. Be meeting together Sunday mornings with us. If you can gather um, with us on Sunday afternoon, if we're able to do Fair Oaks uh, in the future, which hopefully we will, then meet there if you're able to. Uh, meet with your community groups if you're able to. Uh, meet with others just for that mental health friendship gathering uh, as your, your conscience allows you to do that. Um, take advantage of those things as well. Um, also, if you need uh, pastoral care, um, specifically counseling or something like that, 
uh, contact Scott, contact the office. We'll be happy to set that up for you too if you do need uh, real specific and even a, a longer term uh, path for some, some specific care, specific help. We'll be happy to do that for you as well. We just want to want to reiterate that we don't want ministry to stop in any way. We want to continue, despite the restrictions we're under, to continue to keep serving in, in the ways that we can uh, to meet your needs and to, to shepherd you appropriately. Um, I know that the, um, the deacons and the, the pastors and others are, are also engaged in phone calls and a lot of people are texting, a lot of people are emailing. We want to continue to encourage you to keep ministering to one another too. Um, don't just assume that, oh, the, the pastor's got it or the deacon's got it. Um, and I know many of you are doing that. Many of you are taking advantage of, of technology and, and you're getting in, in touch with people. Just keep doing that. We need that during this time. We need that when we're out of touch with each other. I know many of you have enjoyed the, the times at Fair Oaks just to be out and seeing other people from the church is a real blessing. Um, FaceTime them, you know, get on your computer and, and look through the camera at each other. Just to be able to, to see each other is a good thing. I encourage you to do that. Um, so as, as you know, we've, we're deciding at this point that we're going to continue with this uh, way of doing ministry. Um, there, there, may become a, uh, there may come a time where we have to make some hard decisions about drawing a line at some point, um, but we don't feel like we're there yet. We feel like for our context, for our county, for our church, uh, we're still able to maintain ministry at a, at a level where it seems like people are, are being cared for. Praise the Lord. Um, that's happening. And a lot of you are involved in that. A lot of you are, are part of making that happen. And we appreciate that. And you just reaching out and seeking to, to minister to one another, care for each other and love each other. Um, that's a part of how I think the Lord is caring for us and allowing us to do as well as we seem to be doing. Uh, but again, we just want to know if there are, are things that we can do better for you or ways that you're hurting that we don't know about, please let us know because we do want to continue to, to, to be able to, to care for you in a way that would be honoring to the Lord and would be helpful as, as much as it can be to you. Um, we also want to encourage you, uh, just be proactive and be creative uh, during this time. A lot of people are, are doing remodeling on houses. We just had a new shower door put in today and you've got time for some of those kinds of things. Well, think about how you can be creative with ministry, how you can be uh, proactive with, with different types of ministry than maybe what you're used to. I'll give you an example from our youth group. Um, we had our summer camp scheduled for the third week of June. That obviously got canceled. Uh, the camp was uh, able to reschedule us for a week, the first week of August, which would have been last week. Um, but unfortunately, things just stayed too closed down for us to be able to do that week also. So we could have just said, well, no camp this year. Uh, but what Luke and I did is we just kind of knocked our heads together a little bit. And uh, this week, what we're doing here at the church um, every, every night, Monday through Friday, is we're having uh, what we're calling a spiritual boot camp for our students. We're meeting together for a couple of hours and we're studying the topic of discipleship and what it means to be a disciple from what Jesus taught in the Gospels and from what we see in the lives of the apostles and some of the things that they wrote in their letters and how best we can, we can uh, encourage our students to, to know Christ more fully, to be a greater disciple of His, a greater follower of His, uh, what the scriptures teach us about that. So that's, a, that's a, an example of how we can be uh, creative, how we can be um, proactive. Uh, when things are getting shut down, look for uh, other ways that you can be uh, ministering to people and reaching out uh, in, a, in a, a different way than maybe what you're used to or maybe what's easy. Um, but find ways to be able to do things like that where you can be uh, encouraging others in a, uh, a non-normal kind of way. Um, remember community groups, that's, a, that's a, an avenue by which you guys can do some, some creative and proactive uh, ways of meeting. Um, so be thinking about that. Community group leaders, I encourage you to just think of, is there a way that you guys can gather your group uh, for those who would be uh, able and, and feel comfortable getting together in that, in that backyard and being together, masked up and distanced and all that, but, but just being able to, to be present with one another would be a great encouragement. So be thinking along those lines. As a close up today, what I'd like to do is just share uh, Psalm, Psalm 77 with you, uh, just by way of encouragement, that we would be people who are, who are always remembering to be seeking the Lord, always mindful of what He has done and His promises. Um, 
is we look at Israel, one problem that they had is they would very often forget the word and the works of the Lord, right? They would forget the two W's, the word and the works of the Lord. They just forget those things. They would get caught up in what's happening in society, what's happening in their culture, what's going on in their lives. And God would sometimes just get put on a back burner and sometimes further and further and further back. And they would drift away from him. And one of the things that we see as a repeated pattern is they would, they would often repent of that and they would come back. And one thing we would see them do is get into the word. They would open the book and they would remember God's words and they would be reminded of God's works. And we need to do that regularly, and especially during this time. I think it's important for us to be very mindful of the word and works of God because he is a faithful God who loves us and cares for us. And I think this psalm is a good reminder for us of that. So listen as I read Psalm 77. Uh, Asaph writes these words, I cry aloud to God, aloud to God, and he will hear me. In the day of my trouble, I seek the Lord. In the night, my hand is stretched out without wearying. My soul refuses to be comforted. When I remember God, I moan. When I meditate, my spirit faints. We've all been in those places where you just feel like everything's kind of crashing down. Everything is just piling up on you. And even going to the Lord can just be a burden. And it can just make you feel like this isn't going to help. This isn't going to do anything. That's how Asaph is, is starting this psalm. He's just saying, man, things sometimes you get so heavy that even going to the Lord seems burdensome. It seems like it, it's just not going to help. I'm not going to be comforted there. Let me continue. He says, but you hold my eyelids open. I am so troubled that I cannot speak. I consider the days of old, the years long ago. And I said, let me remember my song in the night. Let me meditate in my heart. Then my spirit made a diligent search. Will the Lord spurn forever and never again be favorable? Has his steadfast love forever ceased? Are his promises at an end for all time? Has God forgotten to be gracious? Has he in anger shut up his compassion? And sometimes we may ask those same kinds of questions. Has God forgotten me? Has, has, has God left me? Is he neglecting me right now? Did I do something wrong? Did I make him mad? Does he not love me anymore? We can feel that sometimes. And that's, that's what Asaph is saying here. Is I'm, I'm so troubled. My, my eyes won't even close. You won't let my eyelids close. And he says, I'm thinking about the good old days, how it used to be. Oh, if we could just go back to the good old days. And, and sometimes we'll find ourselves saying that too. But the good old days are past and we have these days right now. And sometimes these days are troubling. And he asks himself, he asks himself these questions about God. And is he, is he faithful? Does he remember? Is he forgotten? Thankfully, the psalm doesn't stop there. He keeps going. And then I said... I will appeal to this, to the years of the right hand of the Most High. I will remember the deeds of the Lord. Yes, I will remember your wonders of old. I will ponder all your work and meditate on your mighty deeds. Your way, O God, is holy. What God is great like our God? You are the God who works wonders. You have made known your might among the peoples. You, with your arm, redeemed your people, the children of Jacob and Joseph. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. Indeed, the deep trembled. The clouds poured out water. The skies gave forth thunder. Your arrows flashed on every side. The crash of your thunder was in the whirlwind. Your lightnings lighted up the world. The earth trembled and shook. Your way was through the sea, your path through the great waters. Yet your footprints were unseen. You led your people like a flock by the hand of Moses and Aaron. Asaph, when he is troubled, when he's despondent, when he's feeling like the pressures of the world are just weighing too heavy, and he's feeling like God's just forgotten him, God's mad at him, God's just not there anymore, whatever it is that he's under, whatever's causing him to feel that way, 
the way that he came out of that was to remember the Lord, to remember his goodness, his good works, to remember his deeds, to remember his strength, his steadfastness, his faithfulness, his mighty hand. There is no God like our God. We need to remember that every day, especially as we go through things like what we're experiencing right now. He is a great God. He loves us. He will not be faithless towards us. He will remember his children. He will care for us. He will meet the needs that we have. He is a good God. The world's not a good place, but we serve a good God. And nothing can prevent him and nothing will prevent him from taking care of his children. Sometimes we walk in the valley of the shadow of death. But like David said in Psalm 23, we should fear no evil because he walks with us. This is a time where there's a lot of darkness, it seems, in some different kinds of ways than maybe, maybe many of us have experienced with this whole virus thing. But God walks with us through this. There's other things going on in our culture, in our world, in politics that are far beyond uh, things that maybe we've experienced in the past that might make us say, oh, for the good old days. But God walks with us now through these days. Be sure to walk with Him. Be sure to look towards Him, to trust Him, to believe Him, and to have faith that He walks with you and He will not let you go. Love you all. Be blessed. We'll see you again soon.